Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike Hurricane from Scratch and today we are looking at Pixel Mash, a piece of software from Never Center. And the reason why I'm talking about this today is frankly because it is one of two applications featured in the Game Creator Humble Bundle. Now this bundle I talked about I think it was two days ago when it was released. There is a uh, crap ton of, and I believe that is the official metric unit, a crap ton. Uh, there is a crap ton of um, assets here for game development. You go through all the various different tiers. We've got various different music packs, sprite packs, and so on. I'm not getting into that again because obviously I've done a video on it. But if you go to the top tier here, you will see we have double lot one game creator or zero zero one game creator or o o one game creator, depending on how you want to say that. And we have Pixel Mash, and I'm going to look at both of those packages. I'm still learning 001, uh, so I will get back to you once I've got that, but Pixel Mash we are going to look at today. Now, I actually took a look at Pixel Mash, uh... When it's first released, I think about two years ago, uh, there is a new version that has been updated. Quite a bit has changed with it, so I'm going to take another look at it today. Now, this is in the top tier. Uh, I think it's about 30 bucks. You pay 25 bucks for Pixel Mash normally, so... Um, if this looks useful to you, the entire package sort of makes sense. You get a bunch of assets to go with it, etc. And this is a pixel art application tool. So you come here, you'll see it's available for Mac and PC. Sorry, I don't know about Linux. It will probably work under Wine, but I am not 100% certain. You can also grab a free 7-day trial so you can check it out yourself. You do not have to go for my word alone. If what you see today impresses you, go ahead and download it. See if it works for you. So now I'm going to head on over to Pixel Mash. And one of the things I immediately like about Pixel Mash, and this is going to be one of those polarizing things about Pixel Graphics art, uh, applications, is so many of them use a retro approach, retro fonts, retro icons, and I can't stand that. I have a high DPI 4K monitor in this day and age. I don't want eye-bleeding, big, chunky pixel graphics in my application, and that's what I do appreciate about Pixel Mash, is it, it doesn't take that approach. It's a modern, clean UI, and I'm just going to go ahead and show you kind of one of two ways you can use this, guys. So first thing we're going to do here is import an existing image. Now you may think, oh my goodness, that looks terrible. Well, you come up here and you see here, this is where the dynamic side of things goes. It can do resampling for you from high resolution down to real low resolution. So here we're going, we're pretty low resolution, but we can move up here and then boom, we are high resolution. We can also bring in an image as a reference. So I could just pop and make this a reference image and then we'll do another layer over top of it. So if I wanted to start doing some tracing or whatever, I could create a new layer right here and then start literally, you know, drawing over top of the underlying layer, like so. I'm not going to do that, so I'm actually going to get rid of that layer. But that is one of the options you have. We can also go back, turn this off as a reference layer, and you can have it dynamically resample. So you can you can pixelate existing images. We can turn the grid off here, and you can see some of the results that are going on. And this is often what a single product does on its whole. It's basically for pixelizing existing images. And it does a pretty good job of it, I gotta add. Uh, so here we got it at a resolution you may or may not like. Again, we can go down much, much more pixelated or we can go up. But there's actually quite a bit you can do with this guy from this point on. What immediately cool feature you've got, especially when you are working with a higher resolution image, is your fixed color palette. So we got your color selector over here, and one of those things we can do with the newest version is we can actually change it up. So we can work with Adobe RGB, have no color management at all, uh, and so on. But what we can do now is we can go into this guy and we can say, all right, let's go ahead and make uh, a color palette of this. So it's right, I always miss it, all, add all document colors to palette. And then we'll go ahead and replace the palette. And then, boom, what it's done is it's pulled out all of the, the palettes from here and put them in here. So that's actually pretty cool. You can pull all of the colors from your existing image, put them in a palette. You can also have this reorganized um, and, you know, sorted to your liking. But the one thing that you would really often do here is their non-destructive effects. You see here we've got our layer area here. Below it, we've got add effects down here. What I can do is go ahead and add effect. And there's a bunch of things we can do here. These are non-destructive, so like stack on top of each other one and you can remove any one of these at any given time so a common thing might be to do say an outline so boom and there you saw we have a pixel outline around the outside we've got options here so we can smooth it we can have it interior tinting interior color full and so on we've also obviously got the option of picking what color we want our outline to be or we can say okay just make the outline so another powerful tool you've got right there and again all of this stuff is non-destructive so at any time i can click an x and get rid of it. so now we're going to go ahead and do another effect we can come in here and say all right i'm going to do um 
uh, shadowing. So auto shade, and there you see immediate results in a little bit overpowering here. We've got a couple of options with auto shade. First off, we can turn anything on and off at any time. And I find that this color, it's a little bit too much. So we're going to drop one of the colors out. We could add another one back in. Uh, so let's turn it back on. There you see much less emphasis uh, effect we can pick the angle to to apply the shade from and this shade is using basically the outline of our image we've got other options here we can also do a directional shade so if you wanted to do lighting based off of an angle you can quickly do your lighting effects using uh, the auto shade feature here we've also got abilities here so it's, for example color key so if we wanted to grab a color here so let's go ahead and say all right and grab that guy drop down here and let's do that purple. So boom, we just color keyed off that purple. You can do your tolerance and basically you can start removing that color out as you can see there. So now our background is gone again. If I decide, okay, I don't like that. I didn't want to uh, key out that particular color. I could just go boom X and it's gone from the stack. You can also change the order that things appear and apply themselves in the stack. We've got other things here, obviously like a mirror with uh, a bunch of different options for direction. So, uh, like so, like so, like so. It's actually kind of cool by accident. So you've got mirroring options available there. We've got other things going on here. So let's add another effect. Let's see, we've got, we could gradient in, mirroring. We did outline. We could remap one color to another color. We can restrict down our color palette if we so choose and pick the, the color and then the tolerance to, to restrict it down to. Uh, we've got painting all of our various different painting tools here, um, you know, normal brushes. Uh, we've got a mask brush for doing things like um, shadowing and highlighting effects and so on. And then we've got some animation tools. It's probably easiest to show you the animation tools in action. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new project. I'm not gonna save that. You're gonna see when we create a new project, we've got a couple of options. We've got standard pixel art where basically you're just drawing with what you're drawing. Or we can do dynamic res, and this is basically, you're working at, uh, so for a 32 by 32, you're actually working at 320 by 320, and it's scaling down. And so now it's time to get to work. We're going to go here to our paintbrush. We're going to go here, we'll pick a reddish color, of course, and then we'll draw a ball. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, this is all available. At any time, you can switch your resolution. This is where that, again... Here we're looking at 32 or 18 by 18 equivalency, and we can go up to the full 320 by 320. So if you want to work in a higher resolution, we have that option. Now I'm going to go ahead and we'll do a flood fill on this guy like so. you got the eraser tool. Again, you've got a masking tool. This will prevent it. It'll only draw on the surface you're on. So for example, here, I'll paint with some blue. Nothing, 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 nothing. Oh, there you go. So that is our shape. We're going to start from there. And now I'm going to go over animation tab right here. Make sure that, turn that off. Animation here. And we're going to just basically start creating some frames. So I can go here, move into the, the move tool. That's what we're going to do. Create a new frame. I'm going to make a transform keyframe. And I can basically just take this guy and move it ever so slightly. Now, one thing you might want to do while doing animations, come up here to the animation tab and turn on onion skinning. So you can see what the previous frame was. You've got control over your onion skin settings. So you can show like the previous two frames, for example. I've only got one frame at this point in time, but it gives you an idea of what's going on. So now let's add another frame. And bring it down another frame and bring it down and another frame and then let's bring that all the way down and now we're gonna do a transform we're gonna do a squash and we're gonna put that guy at the bottom there and then we'll do another frame we'll bring it back up so you're seeing where the uh, the onions the onion skinning is kind of helps you determine where you want to go with things like boom let's go up here a little bit and then I don't know. I think I've really whacked out my perspective at this point, but probably move that guy a little bit faster. And then one more frame. All right, so we just did an eight frame animation. You can see, again, the previous frames. We can jump back to any one of them in this sequence right here. And we can hit play here and we can actually see a preview of our animation. So boom, squatch, and then out. And you can, you can zoom or you can fill. And you kind of get a preview of what you just created right there. Now, the cool thing with this guy though is, what we can do now is add some layer effects. So if we wanted to go ahead and say, uh, I don't know, let's colorize that thing, pick the color we want to do. So let's colorize it to a hue. Uh, let's make that blue. All right, there we go. So we got on the fly, we can change that amount, we can change that up or whatever. We can add various different effects in. So let's go ahead and add in a uh, outline. So boom, now we have a, a drawing around our shape and we're gonna go ahead and we'll add some uh, shading. All right, there we go. So we got our shaded effect. I'll stay with the default, fine by me. Again, I always find this one a little bit over pronounced. All right, so now we have this blue blob that's being, uh, the special effects are being applied on a per frame basis. Come up here, we're gonna show our results. 
and then boom, off we go. So that is, you see the effects are going across all the frames. It is outlined, it is shaded in each one of those situations. Um, you do have other keyframe things that you can keyframe off of, but it gives you an idea of what the animation tools are in here. And that is kind of the essence of it. We got a bunch of things on about palette control. We could create a palette out of a set of gradients. You can create and move your uh, brush radius. Everything here has a hotkey attached to it. And you're gonna see there, there's logic to the locations for the most part. Uh, there is a uh, thing you can download to to actually show you the, the list of hotkeys if you want to print that off. Uh, we can auto sort the palette, which is actually kind of nice from our selected palette earlier. And again, I, I could update my palette. Uh, so here, tools, uh, all documents to the palette, and we'll go ahead and replace. And there you see we have a much simpler palette now. And then once again, you could come in here and you can sort your palette in color order. So if you are working with a fixed color palette, it has a nice selection of tools in here. And again, you do have color management options, so you can work in uh, various different uh, color options. So if you would rather work with Adobe RGB, you can. It's not gonna show up with my little simplistic thing, but it should show up on the fly as you switch between. Um, yeah, you got the ability to, to resize on the top fly. If you're doing your animation based off of image manipulation, you can copy the animation frames uh, with Control Alt C and Control Alt V. So if you want to do frame by frame where you're actually manipulating the raw pixel data in your animations, you can do that right there. And you can also animate the visibility of things. You can uh, make them visible and not visible as you go. So for example, if I wanted to flip out on each frame, I can say visibility keyframe. And then in the layer section, which I seem to have lost, oh, it's up here. All right, I could go ahead and I could toggle it off on a frame by frame basis. So here, and then here, I could toggle it back on. And then here, for example, I could toggle it back off. And if for some reason you wanted your animation to blink out for certain frames, you have that option. I think I turned it back on wrong. Or oh, no, I sorry, I didn't, I didn't key the visibility each frame. Uh, so you do have to set that each time. So I have to say, okay, visibility keyframe. And then here, visibility keyframe. And then when I make it reappear, I have to actually turn that back on. But then you will see it comes back on and goes away. So you can toggle out visibility if you wish. You can change the image itself, manipulate things on a frame by frame basis. And of course you saw we did transformation based uh, um, animation there as well. And then when you are done, uh, you can export your project out. Uh, you got options of PNG, uh, JPEG, TIFF, and of course you could create an animated GIF of your glorious masterpiece. By the way, your speed controls are available here as well. So if you want to speed things up a whole lot, you can move to one. Actually, I'll slow things down. Now, in my visibility is making things look really bad. So if you want to speed things up, you could just do that. And your animation is going to be... Like so. so that is in a nutshell Pixel Master. It's a very straightforward pixel art tool with animation tools built in there. Probably the strength of it, the thing that will bring you here is these uh, these layering effects and the importing tools. Again, if you bring something in, I can import it in as a, instead of opening, I could import something as a reference layer, bring in our marine again like so, um, and have that as a reference. You got ability to move reference things forward and back. Uh, where did they go? Right here. So you can draw it above or we can draw things below right so and then you could use that for tracing or whatever you wish or again you can turn it off as a reference and start pixelating things to your heart's content or you could just bring an image in that you like such as this guy right here and steal its palette like so so let's go ahead and say add all document colors to palette and replace so boom we have a full set of palette right there and then i could just go ahead and delete that out and we could use its palette accordingly. So we can go ahead and uh, sort out our palette. And there, we have a fixed color palette from a high resolution image we brought in. So there's a fair bit of power and flexibility in what Pixel Mash can do. And again, something I personally really like is it's just a modern UI. There's no, uh, you know, attempt to look like an Amiga Deluxe Paint clone. And there's nothing against those applications. I just personally prefer high resolution uh, UIs. Let me know what you think, what your preference is there as well. Do you like those retro style UIs or would you wish they just do the functionality that they did, but use a modern and clean user interface, something like what Pixel Mash here does. So anyways, that is one of the applications that is currently part of the Humble Bundle. Uh, again, unfortunately, it is at the top level tier. Uh, $40 Canadian is probably $30 US. So let, let me know if I'm wrong on that one. Comments down below as well. And also stay tuned. I'm going to be featuring the... Um, 001 game creator game engine as well. It's just gonna take me a little bit more time. I gotta spend a little bit more time hands on with it. I've played with it for a couple hours now. Uh, give me a few more, get a good fix of it, and I'll get a video up on that as well. So let me know what you think, um, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.